discussion uh, we shall look at charter party bill of reading we look at international standard banking practice paragraph g1 to g27 on charter party bill we have seen in detail the multimodal transport document and uh, port to port bill charter party bill is nothing but an extension of that when the credit has a requirement for a charter party bill or when the credit allows a charter party bill then article 22 will be applicable 19 is multimodal 20 is a bill 21 is non negotiable ceva bill 22 is charter party so when the credit when in the credit there is a requirement for a charter party bill or when the credit allows for a charter party bill article 22 is applicable there should be an indication that it is subject to charter party there should be any indication it is subject to charter party in other articles we are other transport documents we have seen no indication of charter party here any indication of charter party or any reference to charter party it can be an indication of charter party or reference to charter party it can be however named there is no problem with the name but only it's an indication or reference called for and not by itself an indication what is not an indication a code name or form name is not an indication what is a code name or form name the words cogent bill or tanker bill when a bill is issued and the top and the head of the bill it says to be issued or in conjunction with or to be issued for charter party contracts it does not become a charter party a cogent bill or a tanker bill form when used and it is issued as a bill it does not become a charter party so this is not an indication of charter party but there has to be a reference to charter party saying freight payable as per charter party or subject to charter party or something like that there should be no reference to a place of receipt or taking in charge or a place of final destination that is there should be no clue to indicate that this could be a multimodal transport document it should not contain this is what is normally we use which is wrong or which should not be used in a this is most important thing which should not be applicable for a charter party transaction and it need not be titled as any charter party bill or any other bill the title is not compulsory because cogent bill tanker bill are the normal forms that we normally use regarding signing it should be signed in the form described in article 22a1 the charter party bill should be signed as per the ucp article 22a1 the master captain owner or charterer signs in earlier cases we have seen it should be signed by the carrier or master or named agents for and on behalf of the carrier or master here it is master owner or charterer charterer can be the supplier of the goods the shipper or the consignee of the goods the buyer the importer the applicant of the lc depending upon who arranges for the charter party depending upon whether it is fob or cfr so the transport document which is called a charter party bl should be signed as per 22a1 either master owner or charterer can sign and signature has to be identified as signed as owner or as charterer etc when agent is signing the agent is to be named and agent should say acting as agent for master as agent for owner as agent for charterer the name of the master or captain need not be stated and the name of the owner or charterer is to be stated name of the owner or name of the charterer is to be stated name of the master need not be stated name of the carrier will not be stated because there is no carrier here but only charterer or owner who is responsible for the carriage when a pre printed shipped on board bill is presented when a pre printed shipped on board charter party bill is presented issuance date is considered as a shipment date unless there is a specific notation with another date as the shipped on board date if there is such a notation that date will be considered as a shipment date respect to the fact that whether it is before or after the issuance date if a notation is not there issuance date is considered as a shipment date when a pre printed shipped on board bill is submitted notwithstanding the fact that the credit calls for a port to port shipment under a charter party subject to charter party or allows a charter party the document that indicates a place of receipt different from the port of loading is acceptable the transport document indicating a place of receipt different from port of bl if there is no indication of pre carriage and in the pre carriage field or in the place of receipt field if it is a received for shipment bl then a dated on board is required if it is pre printed shipped on board bl the dated on board is not required when a charter party bl indicates a place of receipt different from port of loading and no indication of pre carriage 
If it is received for shipment BL, data downboard is required. If it is shipped onboard BL, data downboard is not required. When a charter party BL indicates a place of receipt that is same as the port of loading. Here it is a different from port of loading. Here it is same as port of loading. Where we have the examples of container yard or inland container terminal. As long as there is no indication of a means of precarriage. If it is received for shipment BL, a data downboard is required. If it is a shipped onboard BL, a data downboard date of issue will be deemed to be a date of shipment and no further onboard is required if it is a shipped onboard BL. Now, when the charter party BL indicates a place of receipt different from port of loading and also indicates a precarriage, it indicates a place of receipt different from preloading and also indicates a precarriage, then irrespective of whether it is a preprinted shipped onboard or a preprinted received for shipment BL, it should have a data on board. When the charter party BL indicates a place of receipt different from port of loading and indicates a precarriage, it should have a data on board. And irrespective of the fact that whether the place of receipt and the port of loading are different or same, if there is an indication of precarriage, irrespective of the fact that whether it is shipped BL or received BL, the data on board is required and such a data on the on board will be considered as data of shipment for all practical purposes. The charter party BL should indicate the named port of loading. The charter party BL should indicate the named port of loading stated in the credit. The country, it is not compulsory to be mentioned. And if such a port is mentioned in the place of receipt field, there should be a notation saying the port mentioned in the place of receipt is same as the port of loading. When credit indicates a geographical range, the charter party BL should indicate the actual port of loading, need not indicate the area. It has to indicate the named port of loading or else it should have an onboard on that place port of loading. When a geographical range is given, the actual port should be mentioned. And if there is more than one port, the onboard notation relevant for each onboard is required. When the credit indicates more than one onboard on the charter party BL, when the charter party BL indicates more than one onboard notation or when more than one port, then more than one onboard is compulsory. To repeat, when the charter party BL indicates more than one port of loading, each onboard has to be there for each port of loading. So if there is more than one port, there has to be more than one onboard. And each onboard should indicate goods were loaded on board, which vessel at which port on which date. So the date and the port and the vessel should be indicated on the onboard notation to be effective respect to the fact that whether it is a received BL or a shipped BL when you have more than one port of loading. When the LC calls for a shipped on board, the words like shipped on apparent good order and condition, ladder on board and clean on board is acceptable and deemed to be meaning shipped on board. When a named port, uh, the transport document should have a named port of discharge. It should be same as what is mentioned in the credit. It should be mentioned on the discharge field. If it is mentioned in any other field, then there should be a notation saying the port mentioned in final destination is same as the port of discharge. If the credit indicates a geographical range, the actual port should be mentioned or may also show the geographical range. Only in charter party BL, we have a concession that the discharge port mentioned in the transport document could be a geographical range. The charter party BL when it mentions the port mentioned in the credit, need not mention the country mentioned in the credit. What is an original? The transport document should indicate how many originals have been issued and the document submitted, whether it says first original, second original, third original, or whether it says duplicate, triplicate, or original, does not make a difference because all of them equally are the equal originals. And the same in the eyes of the carrier and the beneficiary for the, and the applicant for receiving the goods from the carrier at the destination port. Consignee, order party and endorsement. Consignee. When the credit requests goods are consigned to a named entity, that is when the credit requests state consignment, the words to order or to order of or order order should not appear and it should be state consigned. When the credit requests consigned to the named party, it should be state consigned and the order, words to order should not be there. When the credit requires the transport document to be issued to order of shipper, then it should be endorsed for and on behalf of the shipper. If the credit requires the transport document to be issued to the order of shipper, it should be endorsed by the shipper or for and on behalf of the shipper. 
when the credit requires transfer document consigned to the order of a named entity it is consigned to the entity here it is consigned to the order of a named entity it may not indicate the goods have been consigned to that entity so when you when the credit calls for to order of a named entity it should not be state consigned regarding notify party when the credit stipulates the details of the notify party the transport document can indicate one or more additional notify parties when credit stipulates actual notify parties transport document can indicate one or more additional notify parties when credit does not stipulate a notify party transport document can indicate any party in any manner in the notify party field if the applicant's details are included as notify party it should not conflict with the credit when the credit requires goods should be consigned to the issuing bank or to the order of the issuing bank or to the order of applicant or notify to the applicant or issuing bank the charter party bl must indicate the name of the issuing bank or applicant when the credit requires were consigned or notify party as applicant or bank charter party should in indicate the name of the issuing bank or applicant and need not indicate the contact details and address the transport document that is the charter party bl need not indicate the contact details and address if the address and contact details of the applicant appear as a part of consignee or notify party in a charter party bl if the name and address and contact details of the applicant appear as notify party in a charter party bl then those details should not be in conflict with the credit the details of the applicant and the contact details should not be in conflict with the credit what is a partial shipment there is no discussion about transshipment in a charter party bl because charter party is a situation where you hire a vessel you enter into a contract with the owner of the vessel the vessel and the master is at your beck and call you decide where the goods will be loaded and where it will be unloaded so the question of transshipment or unloading from one vessel and reloading into another vessel normally does not arise in a charter party situation so that is why the uecp and svp does not discuss about charter party transshipment here the means of shipment means the partial shipment what's a partial shipment partial shipment means more than one vessel when goods are moving by more than one vessel it is a partial shipment even when the vessel leaves on the same day for the same destination more than one vessel if two vessels start from the same port and leave for the same destination on the same day it will not become it will become partial shipment and if a credit is prohibiting partial shipment such a bls cannot be accepted when credit prohibits partial shipment and if more than one charter party bl is submitted and if the shipment is from multiple ports within the given range acceptable ports each set should have a separate on board for the vessel same journey and same destination to be evidenced when the credit prohibits partial shipment and if more than one set of bl is submitted charter party bl and if the shipment is from one or more permissible ports within the given range when more than one B charter party bl with the shipment from multiple ports one or more ports is given then there should be each each set of bl should indicate same vessel same journey same destination loading can be different port but destination should be same it should be same journey and the same vessel if it is not same vessel it will become partial shipment and because credit prohibits partial shipment it will become non complying so the transport document should indicate the same vessel and when more than one bl is called for and if there are different dates of shipment the latest date will be considered for presentation period latest date should fall within the last date for shipment when there is more than one bl and partial shipment is not permitted the latest date for, uh, on those bls should be on or before the last date for shipment when partial shipment is allowed and more than one set of bl is presented if it incorporate different dates of shipment different or the same vessel doesn't matter why it doesn't matter if it is different vessel still it is okay because partial shipment is allowed the earliest date is considered for presentation period and the earliest date should fall on or before the last date for shipment clean the word clean need not appear in the transport document expectation of a clean transport document means there should be no express declaration of a defective condition of the goods or packaging no express declaration of a defective condition of the goods or packaging the word clean need not appear the deletion of the word clean does not make it uh, discrepant or does not make, create a defect description of goods can be in general terms need not be a mirror image need not correspond to need not should not conflict with need not be a mirror image but should not conflict with description of the credit corrections should be authenticated 
earlier we used to have a um, situation where correction can be authenticated with the master carrier or agent here it is master owner or charterer if agent is authenticating agent should say acting for and on behalf of whom is it acting on behalf of master or owner or charterer and it should be identified and capacity and name non negotiable copies non negotiable copies of charter party need not be authenticated because non negotiable copies are not transfer documents in the strict sense flights and additional cost statement indicating payment of flight need not be identical to that statement in the credit if the statement calls for flight prepaid the transfer document may say flight payable at the loading port credit says that cost additional to freight are not acceptable if the credit says cost additional to freight are not acceptable then the transport document must not indicate something has been incurred or will be incurred what something cost additional to freight well, how the indication of cost will be there the indication of cost additional to freight may be by express reference to additional cost or maybe by use of trade terms now what is not cost additional to freight a reference to cost which may be levied or is not considered as cost additional to freight these references the cost covering late return of container as a result of delay or unloading of goods cost related to that and cost related to um, things that happen after the goods have been unloaded so detention charge and demurrage charge are not considered as cost related to additional to freight what is surrender of bl when the charter party bl says multiple charter party bls have to be submitted to release the goods covered by this shipment then the all such a bls should be performing part of the same presentation otherwise such a bl will not be acceptable charter party contracts banks will not examine the contents of charter party contracts in the normal course unless article 22 is excluded ucp has to specifically be modified or excluded by the credit by saying article 22 is excluded and the credit has to indicate what extent and what data in the charter party bl charter party transport uh, charter party contract has to be examined charter party bl will be examined as per this article of ucp but charter party contract will not be examined and if it has to be examined the lc has to say that the 22 is excluded and this data or this to this extent the checking of the documents will have to be carried out thanks for watching this video on charter party bl we shall meet again on another session with another transport document